So welcome to episode four. You might have noticed that I uploaded three episodes altogether. So if you didn't check out episode two and three, you might want to do so before watching this episode. In this episode, we're going to cover two days in Vancouver and then two days in Seattle. I'm going to start with Vancouver, where we visited the Museum of Anthropology and the Owl Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. Um, we spent quite a lot of time also with some of our friends here who we know. Uh, so Vancouver was different in some ways to what I thought it would be. Um, there were some nice parts, but I was really surprised about the amount of homelessness um, and cost of accommodation is also really high. They also have a really bad drugs problem. So if you want to see a few zombie scenes, you really should check out Main Street where you will see people struggling to walk in a straight line. Anyway, here's what we did in Vancouver. The cruise ship in Vancouver, just at the Museum of Anthropology. Which is a bit of the way out the city centre but easily reached on bus number four as so part of an hour's ride out only costs two pounds so easy the uh, museum's quite interesting it's uh, it covers quite a lot of things some mod very recent modern art a lot of things from the 1900s and 1900s from the um, local first nations peoples it also covers a lot of Mexican history and other indigenous nations. So it's covered a lot of ground, some good art and some good history. It's an interesting place to come. It costs um, about £12 um, per person entry fee. So yeah, it's an interesting place to come to, particularly if you're into, well, they call them totem poles. Um, but yeah, a lot of what you can see here are house decorations in front of houses from local tribes. Here are at Owl in Vancouver, down in Delta, south of the city. Um, fairly easy drive, 20 minutes drive. We've got a hire car today to do park run, then come on to Owl here. Later we're gonna go and meet Taro the Malamute and go and see Lynn Canyon Suspension Bridge. So that's the place I've followed online for many years. It's a, well, I think it's an enormous wildlife uh, mainly for rat, well, only for raptors. Um, a lot bigger than anything we have in the UK, I think. Okay. Uh, Barn owl called Sarah. So, tell us about Sarah. Sarah's a barn owl. Yeah. She's 15 years old. Their average life is two to three years in the wild. Sarah came to us. Um, we use her for educational purposes. We yeah. take her to schools and off sites like that. Aww. Put your wing in. So here in Warner Lotes Park, which is uh, just east of Vancouver, um, near Burnaby. It's only it's a very short drive out of east Vancouver, nothing much. It's an off-leash area for dogs and we just met uh, this girl, Taro the Malamute. Has her own Facebook page. And After Vancouver we got the coach down to Seattle. It's all very easy and not very expensive. It's about a four hour trip and the borders absolutely no trouble to get across at all. Found Seattle to be a really really nice city. There's really nice running trails and cycling trails and excellent facilities and really good public transport all around the city. Um, so when we were in Seattle we visited the Juhuli exhibition. So Dale Juhuli is a famous glass artist and some of the folks in London might have seen this exhibition when it was at Kew. We also went to visit the Pike Street Starbucks, which is the first ever Starbucks, and the Museum of Flight. We're here at the Museum of Flight in south, just south of Seattle, still just right in the city centre. James is walking into a Concorde, which is pretty cool. There's a field of about 20 aircraft here, various military aircraft, um, bombers and such like, um, all around. Um, there's lots of information. There's an Air Force One, craft used to fly pet presidents somewhere in the back there. This is the interior of um, the Concorde plane here. Obviously looking at the pilot area there. All of the doors and cupboards and seats are screened off with plastic so you can't actually touch them. Uh, but you get a good idea of what Concorde's like. Surprisingly it's really not that luxurious or uh, it, I mean, it looks like very much like a budget aircraft, I'd say, from today. Uh, two two rows of two seats. There's really nothing that suggests luxury here uh, at all. 
um, anything I've seen. I really, I, I don't really know what I thought it would be here, but I thought it would just be a bit nicer than what it is. This is quite a good view, just looking out over all the various plains that I've stored here, just on just outside the Concorde aircraft here. So this is the Air Force One craft here at the museum. This is last used uh, around about nine, in the 1970s by Nixon. This plane went to China. Back then, China was not an open country. It's all very Cold War, so. This aircraft was primarily functional rather than luxurious. So I'm quite intrigued to see the actual layout of this. As it's basically a functioning Oval Office, is how it's described. So all of the flight deck like a fairly typical and certainly a very functional and not luxurious toilet and there's certainly a lot of space kitchen area a few chairs that, yeah they certainly don't look very luxurious here This begins to look like a little bit more luxurious in here, in the president's stateroom. But when you think this was for a president, it, it is true that it is, the emphasis does seem to be on function rather than comfort. A couple of chairs and a large couch and then just a small water closet off the side. If you do want to come visit the Museum of Flight it costs 25 US dollars each for entry. Very easy to get down here on a couple of buses and a train. It took us an hour and a half from the north of the city, and this is in the south, so it's, it's quite accessible. It's quite a, another nice working area. So, yes, yeah, so you, you can see it's functional, certainly functional for, for all the aides who will be working here. seats a surprisingly large number of people I suppose the president's entourage would be quite large there are some fold down bunks which are intriguing and now into the galley area for food so they were they made the food to order rather than pre-made as you normally get on a commercial flight and some lavatories which don't look anything special there's about five different galleries um, as part of the Museum of Flight so there's this one which commemorates World War One and a bit of World War Two. Uh, there's an awful lot to see here in the day so we've probably been here about three or four hours I've seen most of it but we have spend a lot more time here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. in Seattle it costs it's quite expensive to get in it's about 34 pound per person entry and they do have ex exhibitions at Kew Gardens as well so people may in the UK might have already seen some of Chihuly's work it's quite quite a big place there's also gardens um, to visit as well so I'll show a few things from around the museum it's these really great um, huge central exhibits like the one in front there's all these smaller exhibits around sides which are actually really nice and very easy overlooked. So for example this one with um, depicting snakes, um, probably on some sort of coral I um, expect. There's really some nice detail in all of these smaller ones that you can see dotted around the room.
So in the next episode, we'll be going to Yellowstone. So this is about a thousand miles away from Seattle and we'll be doing that drive over about two days. Yellowstone's obviously an incredibly famous um, place with amazing natural beauty. So looking forward to it. Great, hope to see you in episode number five.